But did you know that I have been watching you since February? Did you have any idea? You have no idea. You have no idea. I, I know that because I'm really, really good at my job. Yeah. So do you think somebody comes into your house, takes your dad's gun, goes out to this cemetery, and shoots and kills this dude, and then brings that gun back to your house and puts it back in your house? Now you know tell them, man. I, we, Who would do I, that? Meet 23-year-old Jerry Lane Henshaw Jr., a resident of Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville is infamous for its increasing crime rates. On February 5th, 2019, in the early hours of the morning, a shooting was reported from the old Middleburg Road area. Police found the body of 17-year-old Marquis Smith, also known as Little Red, with multiple wounds from gunshots. Little Red? You heard that name? That's what he says on IG. Yeah, that's it. That's this guy, Little Red. Marquis Smith? I don't know his real name. Okay. Okay, this dude here has never shot at you. No, sir. Has, and he never pulled a gun on you? No. And tried to kill you? You, you absolutely do, because you're actually a really smart guy. Yeah, of course. I, I, but I, I, you, so you do understand. But you're trying to make me say something about a day that I'm not even thinking about. Uh, do you think your dad killed this guy? No. Okay. All right. Well, fortunately, the murderer was arrested within just six months of the murder. With help of close investigation and surveillance, Jerry Lane Hinshaw was arrested on potential involvement in the murder on August 16, 2019, and was brought to the Duval County Sheriff's Office, Jacksonville. Watch how Jerry maintains his version of truth, regardless of the odds stacked against him. Jerry? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. All right. What's up, man? The other guy who was in here a few minutes ago. Yeah, we got wires crossed. The other, uh, did another detective already come in here? No. I okay, know. okay. So somebody, we got somebody in that room that they're talking to, and they came in here. I thought they came in here. So anyway, I'm going to take the room. Detective Bruce. Yes, sir. How are you? Um, this is my partner. Sorry, man. Yeah. My switch. So you've been talking to Detective Levin about the, the incident that took place? Yes. Okay, so, and I want to go over some of that. And you talked to me about your guns and all that, getting stuff back and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I want to go over some of that stuff. I, and I just kind of throw some of the stuff together that he had for me. So I apologize. I'm not the most organized so guy. Straightforward. Yes. I care about my life. I need to know what's going on. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, and I want to ask you a couple of questions, yeah. too, but I can't... Am I arrested? Well, let me, before I, because I don't want to, I don't want to ask you questions and you answer me questions. Let me, let least at least get started no. on what we need to. No, no, you okay, what you yeah, need. so let's do this and then let's talk and then I can answer anything you've got and if you can hopefully try to answer um, what I got. What is that? That's funny. That's funny. Okay, so... Today is, again, I just grabbed his stuff, so I'm trying to... The 16th. The 16th, August the 16th. August the 16th, 2019. Um, I put that in the wrong place. See, I'm just grabbing stuff tonight. Um, it's trying to be home. Um, we're at the Police Memorial Building. You know where we are? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, the building or the... PMB. Okay, and it is 6.40 p.m. Supposed to be at work. You're supposed to be at work? Yeah, oh yeah. Where are you working? Harper Ah, okay. Over oh, there in Riverside. Yes, Avenue of mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, well, let's try to make this fast. Then. Jerry Lane. L-A-N-E-H-I-N. H-I-N. S-H-A-W. A Henshaw. And you're the third or junior, I mean? Junior. Okay, that's what you told me. Uh, good for you. Are you currently taking any drugs or alcohol? Nope. No drugs, no alcohol. Okay. All right. So I want to, we'll go over your rights and read them. Would you just do me a favor? I know you said you can read and write. Will you read that first line to me out loud? You do not have to make statements or say. No, no, I'm sorry. This one right here. Oh. With the arrow. Sorry. You had the following rights. During the interrogation, Jerry experiences a persistent sense of uncertainty right from the outset, as he is not aware of the specific reason for his arrest. As the detectives assigned to his case enter the room and introduce themselves, one of them exhibits a deliberate pattern of behavior that portrays them as unorganized and somewhat clumsy. This nonverbal cue is strategically employed, designed to play a significant role in the interrogation process. 
It aims to make Jerry feel a false sense of power, which they will use against him later in the interrogation. It's crucial to note that the detectives are already aware of Jerry's guilt through existing evidence. Their goal is to elicit a confession and further incriminating information by employing psychological strategies to break his defenses. Watch how the interrogation unfolds and the tactics used by the efficient interrogators in breaking his defenses. You decide that you understand them. That's all that's saying. You got all kinds of ink. Where do you get your uh, stuff done? Uh, born artful, right there on cassette. And what is that? Like, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Okay. All right. Um, I'll sign that you went over those rights. Um, so you're, they, you, there was a shooting that happened at your house, yes, sir. right? Okay, and your house was shot. Um, and I don't know a lot about it, so I'm not trying to get into all that. But uh, during the course of that um, investigation, the uh, detective Levitt said they uh, they uh, searched. They got I, I think they got maybe some projectiles or something out of the, the wall. out of the wall. And it was it shot into the house. Yeah, uh, one went through my window and hit the refrigerator. And, and, and somebody got hit. Two girls. Two girls got hit. They but they're obviously living. Thankfully, critical. Critical. Oh, they're incredible. Critical. Oh, I think, but stable. Or something like that. Okay, and is she relationship to you? Oh, uh, not really. I just knew her from a buddy of mine that was staying with me at the time. Okay, okay. Uh, what was her name? Let me turn this down. So I think Alexis or something. Alexis? Like I'm not too okay. sure now. Not girlfriend? Man, 100% no. Okay. Well, I wasn't trying to offend you. I was just asking. Um, now... I'll go crazy. That was my old lady. Oh, yeah? What, because of the shooting? She got shot in the head. I had to wrap the band-aid over her head. Yeah, he like said you rat. were trying to help her. And that happened like when you guys were standing outside. I had a baby in my arms. Who's ba your baby? No, my okay. buddy that was staying with me. Okay. His one year old. Holy crap, dude. And the baby wasn't hit? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. You know, let's be thankful for that. And the other girl that was out there, you said two people, two girls? Yeah, it was two girls. And they're both in critical conditions? No, no just one. Okay. Well, that's good. Has anything ever like that ever happened? Have you ever been shot before or shot at before? No, I came home one time and found my roommate dead, though. In that house? Yeah. There's like some curse on that house? I guess so. How long ago did that happen? Probably about three years ago, I want to say. What happened? Or do you know? I came home and found my buddy shot in the face. Oh, he was shot? Oh, I was thinking maybe like an overdose or something. No, nah, he was shot in the face. In that house? So there was a homicide that happened in the house? Yeah. Holy cow. What was his name? Uh, Jaleel George. I don't, I don't think I've never heard that. Have you ever been shot at before? No, sir. Never. I mean, like, deployed in the Army. I know you're 23, so you probably got in the military. I wish it is. Yeah, well. Um, and you weren't even home when your, um, when your friend a few years ago got shot? No, I came home from, I came home from work. He was there. And then I went to Best Bet in Orange Park. Oh, what's that? Like uh, a Best Buy? Kind, like, of? kind of like gambling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I know And shopping. I came home, the door was open, and he was laying right there at the door. So was that, was like a robbery or uh, something like that? And my whole house was around that. Uh, holy cow. And he was shot. Was he staying, he had been staying with you? Or you were staying with him? We were both staying together. We okay. were in out of um, two different rooms in the house. In that house? Yeah. Who lives we with knew you? each other. Who lives with you now there? My dad. Okay, your dad. Um, junior, so you're, that's Jerry Henshaw senior? senior? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, so that's crazy, man. You've been, are those the only two? Or the five. Yeah. What are you? What, what, what are you doing, man? I'm not accusing <laughs> you, man. Curse, man. I'm just saying, maybe it's a house. Have you ever been anywhere else where people have shot at you? Hell no. Okay. I'm no. Not just walking around the road or out someplace and somebody pulls I out a gun. Headed to work, man. Yeah. No, I don't mean today. I just mean in general. Uh, no, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? I'm, I yeah. had to work, come home, stay to myself. Okay. Gotcha. 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 So they they processed the scene. I think they got. He said they got several shell casings, and I don't know what they are because I don't know exactly. I'm just kind of filling in some, and. They got uh, some projectiles. That, do you know, did it go through the house? One did. One went through. I know they got the car, yeah. but it went through the house. Yeah. Did it hit anybody inside the house? No, sir. Okay. And they collected, um, I want to be able to give get your stuff back to you. So they collected guns.
Um, and I've got the property card sheet, so I want to make sure I've got which ones are your guns, and we can get a signature form so I can get those guns released to you. And do you know what kind of guns you had? Uh, to be honest, my buddy was staying with me too. Yeah. And he was living in the living room, so his stuff was in my room. We had stuff all together. Okay. Clothes and all together. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't, and I don't know about the clothes. Whatever was there, you know, there's um, there's different stuff that I know they want to get, but I was just going through like the gun My so I can get it. Yeah, it's gun though, but I need to make sure that gets back to them. What gun's that? The uh, shotgun right there. Okay, so this is your stepdad's gun? No, and Gilmore. Okay, and this is all, the, what he said is everything from the crime scene detective who collected everything. I want to make sure. So there's a 12 gauge shotgun. Mm -hmm. Uh, some other kind of rifle. Rifle. Okay. Uh, AR-15 style rifle. Yeah. Okay. And I circled the one. There's a 22 caliber revolver. Yeah, I guess. Okay. All right. Um, a uh, 357 revolver. That's my dad's. Your dad's gun is this one. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, 380 auto uh, pistol with magazine. I don't even know about that, son. Okay, so it's a Smith & Wesson. Bodyguard? You don't know. I couldn't tell you. Okay, so I can't release that one to you because you're not sure. Okay, so unknown on this one. Um, but you do know that the shotgun, the rifle, 22 caliber. I don't know about the 22. And what's the 22? That's yours? No, I don't know what. Oh, you don't know this one either? I don't know that one. Okay, so unknown on the 22. So you know about the 12 gauge shotgun? Yeah, that's my step. Okay, stepdad. What's his name? Milton Gilmore. Milton Gilmore. M I L T. Uh huh. O N. Okay. Gilmore. G I L M O R E. Okay. Milton Gilmore. Uh, the other rifle, the DPMS. Yeah, I knew about that one. And whose is that? That was me and my buddies sharing it. Okay, so I can release that to you, Jerry. And the three fifty seven revolver. That's my dad's own. Yeah, I have to talk to him. Okay, so you do you? Um, all right, so let me ask you this: Going back on it, do you ever have? Try, do yeah. you ever have this one? It's in my room. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the the twelve gauge shotguns in your room. Yes, sir. Uh, this rifle. Does this one in your room? I'm trying to figure out what's the best one. Okay. All right. Well, that's easy then. And this one, you don't know. You said unknown. Uh -huh. This one. It should have been in my dad's room. The this one would be in your dad's room. You yes, think? Sir. Okay. No, I and know because he this sleeps one. with it. Your dad sleeps with this yeah, guy? Yeah. Okay. And then this one? Oh, shit. I couldn't tell you about that. And this, oh, you said you don't know. Okay. All right. All right. So I can look on that. I'll show pictures, maybe. That would help. Um, he printed off pictures for me. Merely a week prior to Jerry's arrest, a shooting occurred at his residence, resulting in injuries to two women. Although this incident had no direct link to Jerry, as it involved individuals residing at his place, the investigation into the case unveiled crucial evidence connecting Jerry to the murder of Marquis Smith. Witness how these details come to light. Here, Jerry shows disinterest through his body language, signaling his reluctance to be in the interrogation. His wide-open legs suggest a lack of confidence and an attempt to establish dominance. Leaning against the wall indicates a relaxed state, while placing his legs on the chair shows a desire to assert authority and maintain a rebellious attitude throughout the interrogation. At this stage, the detective's approach appears strategic, allowing Jerry to feel comfortable and vulnerable. And who, who you said your stepdad, or your dad stays with you yes, over there? Sir. Does your stepdad stay over there? No, that's his house. Whose house? My stepdad's. All right, I'm confused. Okay, so my your step, step... Yeah, my stepdad, he rents out the house. Your stepdad. Yeah. Okay, I got and it. And every All now right. and then, you know, sometimes I need help. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Things get tough. Sure. And the house ain't rented out. Right. I'll stay there. You'll stay there. Yeah. And your bio dad stays there. Yeah, right now he does. Right, right. So when you were saying dad and stepdad, two different people. Two different. Got it. Milton, Milton and Jerry. Jerry, Jerry Senior. Jerry is my dad. I got it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm slow, but I'll, I'll eventually get there. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so I'll do the forms for you to get back over there. All right, so that'll I think that clears up that. And I also wanted to. So do you? Okay, do you ever have in your possession 
you're not a convicted felon, because uh, and I already know because that was one of the things he told me. So do you um, do you have do you have these guns ever? Well, not that one because that's hers. Shotgun. And I had that before. Okay. You ever gone? You ever have the other guns anywhere? The night the girl got shot. Yeah. My dad was running around. And he thought the car was going to come back. Mm -hmm. I told him to get inside, grab the gun from him, and I put it back in the holster. Which gun? Oh, this one with the holster? Okay. So let me ask you this. Because part of what they're going to do with the processing is um, they'll swab all the guns. Um, just because they want to make sure that they weren't involved. That's just standard practice. Everybody does that. So your um, either prints or DNA is going to be on this gun? Yeah. Okay. So you'll have your, your stuff on this guy. And you're saying that's the, the only time that you had, when have you, have you ever had any of these other guns at any other time other than that night? This one, a little boy had in the apartment. My whole boy took it from him. And it was just been at my house. This and, one? Yeah. And if it's sitting out where I don't want it, I'll move it. Okay. But it's not mine. Okay. Not yours as in registered to you. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but I don't, I don't think anybody. You, you don't even have to register. Yeah, you can just go to the cell. Right. Yeah, yeah. You do that. So okay. All right. So you lived on the west side your whole life. Yeah. Okay. Out there. All right. And you already said that's not hers. All right. So I wanted to. Have you? So you've been out there for a while. Yeah. You know that area of town. Um, your whole life. I'm going to ask you about a couple guys that I'm trying to identify. You ever seen any of those guys? I don't know him. You do know him? Yeah, What's his name? my friend um, that was staying with me. That's his cousin, Carlos. This is Carlos? Yeah. I don't know anybody. Else. You know, these guys all hang together. That's Carlos. You know they Carlos? Trouble. They uh, not not with me. Oh. No, but I'm just I with you. no, not with me. Um, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to sort out some stuff. Okay, so this guy, do you know him? Have you ever seen him before? I think I seen him and Carlos. Um, they hang around so so many boys at a time in London Town, but do you hang out in London Town? No, not anymore. I don't know. Okay. I would never hang out in London. Town. You don't? Well, yes, yeah, changed a couple names. Okay. Um, do you know where this is? There's a very isolated cemetery. On the west side. Off of Old Middleburg Road. Here is... So like this is 95, Old Middleburg comes down here and then it comes up. Then th this is a, it's a very isolated cemetery that's off over there. I have no idea about the cemetery, but I know there's a little farm right there. When you go over the overpass. A farm? Like a, it looks like a farm, like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Okay, I don't like know. Like if you coming from her lawn per se. And you go over like past yeah 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 right. And got some little so her lawn would be like right here. It's the next one up. So if you came down like West Side Baptist Church is here, you came down her lawn, Middleburg over there. Yeah. Do you know? Have you been? Have you ever been to this never cemetery? Been there. You never been to this cemetery no, anytime ever no, in the last year. Nope. Does this look familiar at all to you? No. Nope. Nowhere. Looks like all the same. It is, yeah, yeah, just different angles. Because sometimes people are, you know, look at it differently in the in the light when you take pictures. That's at night time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've never been out here? No. Okay. In this phase of the interrogation, the detectives employ a strategic method known as evidence-based interrogation to confront Jerry. They present images of individuals connected to the victim, Marquise, as well as images of the crime scene. This tactic is employed to gauge Jerry's reactions and responses. While the first detective engages Jerry, the second detective watches him closely. The primary role of the second detective is to carefully observe and analyze Jerry's reactions while remaining silent and attentive. 
Jerry's response reveals a seasoned individual attempting to maintain a facade of confidence, but the detectives are equally experienced and skilled at figuring the right triggers to get meaningful responses. So I'm, I'm working um, a homicide that occurred um, here at this cemetery mm -hmm. in February, okay, back on the 5th of, uh, of February this year, where this kid here, this, this guy, I'm hearing that he does all kinds of stuff. He's into dope, and he tries to rob people, break into houses, all kinds of kids are crazy. All the, whoever hangs out with Carlos, this that, guy, that's their image right there. This that's is all it. they post. Okay, so you know who Carlos is, yeah? And you, but you you never seen this guy? No. Has this guy? This guy. Did he, has he ever tried? Uh, probably because it doesn't cross creek, but I don't remember him. Like, this is cross creek. Talk to him or right, right. Like that. So would this guy have ever contacted you? I mean, probably through Carlos, but we haven't like talked, talked. Okay. Has what has he ever reached out to you in any way at all through somebody to try to meet with you? To has this guy here ever tried to rob you? No. Okay, so this this guy's never tried to rob you. Has this guy ever tried to? Yeah, he ain't did nothing to me. <laughs> this guy has he ever tried to use he a gun on you? He never did nothing to me, man. Never tried to shoot you. Never tried to jack you. No, sir. Nothing, at all. No, sir. You're sure? I'm sir. Because I'm trying to find out. That's that's just what I'm hearing. And I guess, and that is the boy though that he always saying rest in peace. Who's saying that? Car well. I think I've seen him post it before, mm -hmm. but I don't really for taking the IG stuff like that. What's the IG? What do you mean? Instagram. Oh, my bad. Yeah, oh. yeah. I'm old. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to I, You got to, I don't know, man. Okay, I'm still I, living in always, a mice debase world. I mean, they, he always posts group pictures like that. This guy does? Carlos? Yeah. When's the last time you saw Carlos? Before we moved to Ricker, so about a month ago. Okay. Where'd you see him at? Oh, his apartment complex right there in Ricker. Okay. Um, where is that? Right there by the Walgreens and Publix. Publix on, oh, yeah, 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 103rd. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about the other end, like, like by no, no, no. Wilson and all that, but straight uh, south of that, like 103rd. Okay. Yeah, so these dudes are, are you know, potential. I mean, I, I, I'm i not posting. So what are they saying? That Pit, he's pictures. Always robbing people? I mean, I, I know his dirt. This guy, Carlos? Yeah. He's on the same type of time, I guess you are saying he is. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to put words. I'm just trying to, I want, these guys, these guys what I'm hearing is that that's what, that's what happened. And I'm just trying to what get you your side. That's why I want to talk to you because Levitt, said, you know, was working on the on the stuff. And I said, man, I because I've been trying to um, talk to a couple people that are out there. And he, what what's that? On my side about what though? About this guy here. If he ever tried to rob you? Oh hell no, man. He never, never pulled a gun on you, <laughs> shot at you. Have you ever? And you said the only time anybody's ever shot in your area was the other night. The other night. You've never been shot? No, sir. Well, have you ever been shot at? No. Nope. Okay, this dude here has never shot at you? No, sir. Has And he never pulled a gun on you? No. Nope. And tried to kill you? No. Nope. I'm just saying, if somebody tried to pull a gun on me, I mean, I know what you what you got to do. Yeah. Um, but this kid here, Little Red, you heard that name? That's what he says on IG. Yeah, that's it. That's this guy, Little Red. Marquis Smith? I don't know his real name. Okay. I didn't even know Little Red was his nickname. You didn't. And you don't think you ever seen him before? I mean, I probably... Well, I mean, maybe seen him with them. Right, but never like seen him in the fact that this dude tried to jack you. No. Okay. Never happened. You never saw, and you've never been out to this cemetery. Mm -hmm. So this guy, so the people that are telling me that you were out here minding your own business, and this dude tries to jack you out here, that ain't right? I've been out there, man. You've never been here? No. Okay. So I think they got, 
like on all this. Okay, so you're, but I need you to be 100% honest with me. And I'm not saying you're not, but I need you to be 100% honest I because mean, you, we're talking about my life here. You're right, kinda, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I don't get what you're talking about. Well, I, I'm just, I'm being completely straight with you, okay? I'm trying to find out if this guy ever tried to rob you or shoot oh, at you. About I'm this sorry, guy. this guy, upside down. I'm sorry. This guy. I'll circle him so I don't mess up, which is this guy. This guy. Never I did. I just know through Carlos. Man. Okay, gotcha. When's the last time you saw this guy? Maybe with Carlos. Okay. I couldn't tell you. Okay. Well, not since then, because he's dead. He was shot and killed multiple times at this cemetery. Oh, I know he did, because Carlos always says... Posting about it? Yeah. Okay. But I didn't know about how he got killed or anything. Okay. But right. I did hear that he used to rob a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, it's everywhere. Everybody knows that. He's got a long criminal history, so you can look all that stuff up. Okay, so, well, all right. Let me grab one more thing. I'll be right back. You want some water or anything? Can I use the bathroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And then I'll really honestly have a couple more questions when we're done. Because I just got to, I want to grab one more thing off my desk. And, um, yeah, you bet. No worries. After nearly half an hour of interrogation, the detective initiates a confrontation with Jerry, discussing the incident involving Marquis Smith's death while displaying images of the crime scene and the victim. This begins to impact Jerry's psyche, gradually leading to changes in his tone. Note how he starts getting more rigid in his posture. In this section, Jerry starts to comprehend how the investigation into Marquise's death has brought the detectives to him. In an effort to appear innocent, Jerry repeatedly denies ever having met Marquise, but acknowledges seeing him with Carlos, a mutual acquaintance of both Jerry and Marquise. However, as the detective persistently presses Jerry with the same question about their meeting, Jerry's denials become more adamant, and his body posture stiffens, indicating potential deceit. Your phone's ringing, man. Jesus. Your phone's ringing. My phone's ringing. Uh, I don't know. It's probably mine, yeah. My wife's going, are you ever going to come home? No, the answer's no. Never. Yes, yeah, just a few minutes, actually. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to know. Before we finish, a couple things. All right, your phone number uh, you gave me. How long have you had that phone number? Not sure. To be honest. Okay. Um. You, um, you do not know how long you've had that phone. Six months? A year? A week? I got different phone calls, huh? Do you? Yeah. Okay. Um, why do you have different phone calls? Always break them. Well, but you keep the same number. And then I have a girlfriend and I <laughs> get on the airplane. And... Yeah. So your numbers change? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you don't know how long you've had that phone number? No. Okay, no idea. So, I will, um, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll pull your, um, well, no, they've already, the, um, Detective Levitt was already working on all the, um, cell phone stuff, because that's just part of the investigation, too, is to find out where people have been, because all, they're all, all the cell phones say that. Mm -hmm. Um, any of the past numbers that you have? Which now they they'll just throw out a net. Will they? Will they? Will the any of those phone numbers put you at the cemetery? No. No. Okay. No phone numbers gonna put you. I out don't there. know why you're trying to put me in this position, man. I'm not. I'm my life. I, I promise you, I'm not here. Is you got me terrified right now because you don't even know who you got to get me mixed up with. You got me snatched up from the streets like I did something. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty serious. Yeah, and so and, and that's here, why I'm saying that's why I'm trying to give you a chance to talk to me. So, and and here's where we are with this. Mm -hmm. So, this, I, I'm tr I've been, I can't put any words in your mouth because yeah. I don't want to do that because I don't want to speak for you <laughs> and legally I can't tell you yeah. what to say. I would never even remotely do that with anyone. I can't do that. I've been trying to give you afford you the opportunity to tell me. The truth. The That's truth it. Truth about what? The truth about this. I didn't have nothing to do with that, and you need to stop putting that on my name, man. Uh, it's just you and I in here. Why, why are you worried about your name? 
because me and you. I'm not going out there and telling anybody. I'm not going out the street. I'm asking you. Kill somebody. Uh, I'm trying to say. Were you? I'm trying to ask you about this because here's what here's my concern. Okay. This. My cell phone ain't gonna go to it. Okay. None of that. Nothing will ever come back that will put you here in the cemetery. No sir. And this kid trying to rob you. Okay. Don't even hang out with him. Okay. Okay. So what I'm saying is. If anything ever does, I don't get a chance to come back and talk to you again. Yes, this is my chance and your chance. All I do, really, only, honestly, in my job, all I do is I, um, I just find facts. Yeah. I, wherever the facts are, wherever they lead me to, I find the facts. That's it. I talk to people. Um, there's a lot of things forensically that happen that you can't uh, manufacture, you can't make up, you can't, um, you, you can't enhance they just are what they are. And so what I do, I try to get ahead of all of that stuff and talk to people and give the people the, uh, afford the people the opportunity that I would want somebody to give me their side of what happened. There is no side to my story. Right? Okay. There's do no you, story for me. Do you know why then, and I'll just ask you this, and then and if you want to rethink and tell me something, that's fine. If not, then there's really nothing else for me to ask you. Can you tell me why you're... Your gun. What gun? The 357. It's not mine. Okay. Do you think your dad killed this guy? No. Okay. All right. Can you tell me why then? You give, just give me anything. Give me an explanation. That gun killed this guy. There is no doubt. There, it's it's at a hundred percent. It's a provable. Commodity. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand. Okay. So that gun that's in your house, that's in your possession, that's not in my ki- possession. That ki- in your house, that that three fifty seven revolver that's in your house and that's kills house this guy. Right now. What's that? It's a house that we bring out. Okay. So it's not okay. technically. So my house. what we're gonna do is, and we're gonna find that. All of that is, I'm gonna find who's at that house okay. on this day. In this interrogation, the detective employs the deception detection technique by stripping away layers of deception or false information by systematically addressing and discrediting each potential excuse or alibi the suspect might offer. The detective begins by inquiring about the specifics of Jerry's mobile connection and the duration of its use. Remember the crucial evidence that was mentioned in the beginning? The 357 revolver along with other guns mentioned in the clip were taken into custody following the shootout at Jerry's house. As the guns were examined, detectives found out that the 357 revolver is the same gun from which Marquise was killed. This was one of the biggest pieces of evidence against Jerry. It's worth noting that one of the most crucial pieces of evidence against Jerry is an audio recording in which he discusses details of the murder that only someone directly involved in the crime would possess. This audio recording was provided by a reliable, confidential informant. With this compelling evidence in hand, the detective confidently presses Jerry to provide consistent answers. As the pressure intensifies, Jerry's reactions become increasingly aggressive, and he starts to counter-question the detective about the reason behind his interrogation. Despite Jerry's attempts to deflect, the detective maintains patience and composure, continuing to corner Jerry with his line of questioning. That killed this kid at this cemetery. That's easy. That is, that is like See? the easiest thing that I do. And so are you telling me, and that's what I want to know. I, is, that's what I'm asking you. I'm not trying to pin anything on you. I'm trying to ask you for an explanation, because I don't know. I, I don't know... This kid, you know, being mean to you, bullying you. You're saying you don't, you've seen him, but you don't know him. No, you've no, never been here. Never been this there. kid never tried to rob you. This kid never, ever, ever attacked you, did and anything to it. But yet crazy. your gun, your gun, my gun kills this dude. <laughs> you're saying my gun, but it's not my gun. The gun that's in your house, the 357 that's in your house. And I always got friends that, that stay over. So you think, I, that's what I'm asking you. So are you telling me that and one I'm of your friends. I'm not saying that none of my friends did nothing because. Well, you are saying no you're going to have that. to because I'm going to, I'm going to. Well, I'm going to find out who was in that house. It's a very simple procedure. We'll find out exactly who's in that house that day. I will find out everyone who's at that house. Would it would it surprise you to tell me and that I, I never have... carry around the 357? Never would I never even think about even going right beside my dad and taking his gun. My dad, he's an elder. He don't get about the bed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not I'm not saying your dad did it. Um, that's why I'm asking you. But would it surprise you to know that I've that in the yeah. last few months that I've already talked to several people? 
Okay. Would that surprise you? No, or would, it wouldn't surprise you. said a whole you. year. What, what's that? You said a whole year, right? This was February, and it's now August. So half a year, roughly six months, that I've been working at this since I got called out there that evening. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that in doing cell phone searches and in doing uh, video surveillance and doing all the other things that yeah. we do on our end, would it surprise you that I've already come in contact with other people and they've told me what happened? Would that surprise you? Surprise me about what? About what happened? I don't you know. You don't what want happened. to tell me what happened? I don't know what happened. You, I mean, honestly, you you don't know how to explain that you're at this cemetery that I'm not this at that kid cemetery. gets shot and killed with your gun. Come on, now. I'm, I'm. You give me something. Give me anything. Give me anything. I haven't done ha that. How, how did that happen? You're playing with my life right here. I'm not playing. I'm, this ain't playing. I'm not playing. Yeah, I know I, you're no, not playing. I'm not playing at all. I'm, I'm taking you. I'm man. just I'm not I'm, saying I'm, man to man. Yeah. I'm asking you a question. Yeah. How does your gun, how does your 357 kill this kid? Give me, explain it. Figure out who was at the house. But that, done. Done. Yeah, what I'm telling you, when I'm saying I'm going to do those things, the reality is, is that's already been done. Okay. That's already done. We, I've already I've already accomplished all that. Okay. I did all of that before I was ready to talk to you. That's why I didn't step to you uh, a week after this. Yeah. When I knew what was going on. But did you know that I had been watching you since February? Did you have any idea? You have no idea. You have no idea. I, I know that because I'm really really good at my job. So I'm telling you, you don't you can't offer any kind of an explanation as to how your gun. The gun that you say isn't yours, but it's in your house. That your dad, who is an elder, who is, doesn't move around, and, and, and I ain't did nothing. And you didn't do anything. And you didn't do that. And you can't. Can you? I mean, can you even imagine how it happened? What do you mean? Like, give me something. Who took your gun and went out and did this? I couldn't tell you. I didn't. It's not so, my gun. Who took the gun that's your father's? That's in the house that you live at. And that you were living at, that you were I had at, my own gun. and that you were at this place, and that you went to the cemetery, and then you came back home. How did that happen? You did somebody in your house you that was staying with you? Who, who was staying I'm with there. you? I'm not there. Here's here's a way to verify if you're telling the truth, because this I know. I have a I I have this information on February the fifth. Who was staying in this house? It's a it's an easy way right now for you to tell the truth. Who was staying at your house? I'll give you an easy day. You can tell me who was staying in your house. We'll just say the month of February. Because I know. I already have that record. Who was in your house in February? My dad. That's the only person? Yeah. That's the only person that was staying in your house. It's the only person that came and visited you, that hung out with you, that you brought back to that house. That was it. I don't get what you're trying to say. Sure you do. You, you absolutely do, because you're actually a really smart guy. Yeah, of course. I'm smart. I, I, but I, you, so you do understand. But you're trying to make me say something about a day that I'm not even thinking about. I, I, well, you're, you're thinking about it now, because we're sitting in a room and I'm talking to you. I, but I gave you, I gave you the opportunity to say, not even, uh, you, you can't even, I get that. Let's don't, let's don't hold yourself to a date. I just say in the month of February, Valentine's Day. What about any time in February? Who's at your house? Just my dad. That's it. So, because I just took him in. But it, it, when did when did he begin staying with you? Because I know this, I've already done my homework. I couldn't tell you when. I just know he went to the hospital from out of my clinic, and then I let him move in after he was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You what was he in the hospital for? Uh, broke his hip. Yeah. And by the way, how is he doing? He's doing all right, okay. but he just broke his other hip. <laughs> it must be the house then. So. So in we, the house. What's that? In the house. Yeah. Yeah. And did you... Um, so in the month of February, other... So somebody... Do you, do you think... I have buddies over all the time. Yeah. So do you think somebody comes into your house, takes your dad's gun, goes out to this cemetery, and shoots and kills this dude, and then brings that gun back to your house and puts it back in your house? There ain't no telling, man. I, we, Who would do I, that? At this point, it becomes apparent that Jerry is engaging in a somewhat irrational attempt to cover himself, and lacks strong rationale for his actions. The detective drops statements designed to extract reactions from Jerry. The evidence that the detectives already have against Jerry can be considered enough to charge him. The only thing Jerry is doing is maintaining a confident facade of innocence. 
However, the detectives show that regardless of Jerry's defensive approach, they are one step ahead by revealing that they have closely monitored him for the past six months. This strategy, marked by a dominance of action and gradual unveiling of the truth and the investigation, is steadily pushing Jerry closer to the edge. This approach helps in breaking down his defenses and extracting more truthful responses. Who honestly, if somebody people get rid of guns when they kill people, yeah, yeah, unless. So you're they, trying to say I wouldn't be smart enough to do it? No, I'm saying so I didn't. You do that. give me give me a reason as to why. I can think of one reason. One reason what? Yeah, I can think of a reason why that would happen. But I can't tell you what to tell me. I I just want the truth. I want you to tell what me the truth. I haven't did nothing. Truth. Okay, so you were you've never been at this no, bro. never no. You have never ever no. been at the cemetery. You did not in any reason. This guy did not try to jack you. He did not try to shoot at you. No. And you did not in any I way don't carry my dad's gun. You don't even carry your dad's gun. No. That three fifty seven has never been out of your by you out of your dad's house. No. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. So this is our this is our last time. I, I'm not going to handle you. Are you I'm trying to ask you. I'm to you. That's not Yeah, I, I, I am. I, I am, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I am. But I don't know why, because I, I, I haven't lied to you. Okay. Okay. So there's no reason for you to change that story. Ever. There's no reason for you to change the story. Not at all. There's no reason at all for you to then come back tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now, and say, okay, I was scared, Detective Reeves. Here's why I didn't want to tell you, because you're the police. Even though you're, you're super nice, you're not bullying me, you're not beating me up, you're not threatening me, but I didn't want to tell you the truth. Here's the truth. Uh, all I can say is, let's figure out who's been, what's in my house, whatever day that is. Mm -hmm. That took your gun, mm -hmm. your the gun that is your dad's gun, out of the house. You can ask my dad, I don't even touch the gun. Okay. That's not me, man. And do you know that you can tell about, so you said, Correct me if I'm wrong. That the only time you ha you handled that gun was the other day. Yeah, when she got shot, my dad came out the house with his gun, and he's old. Mm -hmm. I touched the gun and put it back in the holster and put it in his bed and said, "Dad, I'm calling the police." Right. Just stay in the house. That was stay it. Away from the windows. I'm getting your gun right here. Okay. That's, That's it. it. Okay. So the when when when. You find a, a mixture of DNA, old, new, young, all that kind of stuff. It's crazy stuff. You, you've crazy. seen TV. Mm -hmm. So there's not going to be anything else on there. Shouldn't be. Well, I mean, it shouldn't is, it is a little different than what. Well, you're saying new and old. Well, you only touched the gun the one time. New. You only touched the gun the one time. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You didn't do this. No, I You had no this. reason to do it. And it, it wasn't that the guy was bullying you or threatening you or tried to shoot you? No, sir. No. Okay. Anything else you can think of? No. Yeah, and you don't know about the phones. Um, but it's okay, because I do, because we've already been okay. working on those, and we'll be able to um, um, present all of the, present that information. Yeah. We have the information. We just will have to present that. Yeah. Okay. And, and no, you can't even fathom a reason that Dude. you're done. Come on, you're not lying to me. I'm not oh, yeah, gonna I'm not lie to you. Yeah, I got a life to live. I ain't got time to play. Okay. What? I, what do you mean? I I want to go home, get to work, just like I do on a regular daily basis. Mm -hmm. So whatever helps you helps me. Yeah, well, I would think so. Do you sell dope? I used to. Well, I know. I know. I'm talking about. I'm not the dope police. You know that. Yeah. That's not. This ain't the dope police office. You're more uh, serious it, than them. Yeah, yeah. Because if I was uh, a dope police guy, I'd have a beard and you know <laughs> t-shirts and skinny jeans on. That's what the dope police have. Um, but I, I don't care. I don't care. But I'm asking you. Do you still do you still dabble? Do you sell? I used to. Okay, I used to, as in, not I'm not this to, minute because no. you're here. No, I. Last week. Last month, a couple months ago. Yeah. This is important. It's important. Because all I that's about your working. credibility. Yeah. Because, again, what I told you I've been, because something came forward, and I've been watching you. That's why I'm telling you this is important. So when I ask you a question, nine times out of ten, I already know the answer to it. Because okay. I've been doing this a long time. Mm 
And I respect that. And I appreciate that. You haven't been disrespectful in any way at all. And I hope you'll never take me as being disrespectful. No, no, no. I don't. Not at all. So you, uh, so again, I know you used to. Give me a, what's the last time you think sold? Last week when rent was due. Okay. Got it. Now what's typically what you sell? I wouldn't want to say anything. What, anything? You don't sell anything. I know that. I do what I take to get my bills paid. I understand that. I'm not and judging you. I'm not the drug police. Get my bills paid. Yep. And then you don't dabble anymore yes. for a little bit till your bills are done. What do you normally sell? They try to say I sell heroin. I ain't trying to say. I'm just asking you a question, just man to man. Heroin. Okay. Anybody mad at you? Anybody, anybody, if you think, make up a lie on you? I mean, you got to tell them. Well, if you ask me that, if you ask me that, well, I'm an ass a lot of times, so there's some people that are mad at me. But for the most part, and no one's going to make making up a story that I was out at the cemetery and some I jet mean, tried to jack me. A lot of, lot of my friends do right now, I'm working and hanging out by myself, is because a lot of your friends ain't your friends, man. No, they're not. Or not. In this segment, Jerry positions his face closer to the detective, adopting a slightly more confrontational approach while keeping his tone composed. The detective allows Jerry to do so, yet maintains control over the power dynamic in the room. Despite the physical evidence directly pointing to him, Jerry continues to deny his involvement, hinting at the possibilities of taking himself out of the case. The detective's brilliance shines through as he manages to extract information from Jerry about being betrayed by friends, hinting at the fact that Marquise tried to rob him. Additionally, Jerry's growing frustration with the persistent questioning coupled with his inability to provide substantial answers suggests the likelihood of him harboring the truth but refusing to say it. And right, I just I found did. out the other day when I had my homeboy and I had a baby and we're getting shot at. And Maybe he's got something to do with it. It's just I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't have enough on that case. Let's say this. Let's say you went out uh, you didn't. You did not go out to this cemetery at night. And you did not, there was nobody else out there with you. And I have not talked to anybody else. Let's just, let's pretend that, okay? You, you feel, I don't you, want to pretend. You feel, you feel me? You know where I'm going with this? No. So you, well, you, I know where you're going, but right. I don't. Okay. Do you, you don't believe me? Are you trying to say I've been there? I'm, I'm saying, you're telling me you weren't here. Yeah. And what if I tell you that I've talked to somebody who said you were there? Are they, would those people be trying to do something to you? They got something against you? That's what I'm trying to ask you. No, man. When my phone boy, Jaleel, was found dead in the house, people blamed me. Uh, and I had to deal with that shit. Your name, so no, your name ain't come up on that. But no, it didn't come up to y'all. But right, yeah. Your yeah. family and all that shit. You know what I mean? No. Why do they think you had something to do with it? Just because we were, you came from college and he had pounds of weed and I was doing my thing and they thought I set him up for the weed, but they didn't know I was doing my stuff. Yeah. They thought I was just after his hmm. And I know for a fact that it was his sister that had somebody shoot up my house. This last time? No, when Jaleel died. Oh, okay. But I wasn't staying in the house. You weren't even there. there. Yeah. I wasn't even there. Nobody other than, well, you weren't, so you're on this last time over off at your house on Woodcrest, this last time, you're inside the house, you hear the gunshots. What? Or you're talking about the two girls? Yeah, or you were outside holding no, the baby. Outside My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody else ever pulled out a gun on you before. No. Never. In, in the time you've been selling, no one's ever tried to jack you? I had, Come a, baser, on, I had on. a baser put a knife to me once. Okay. okay, well, that's a pretty big deal. You'll know when you're selling to the... Well, you won't know. I don't yeah, want to. Yeah, you will. You, you won't know when you're selling to the police. You, you won't know. do it in front of you. Yep. Well, that's you know we got new rules? Do you? Do the drill? Oh, damn. I'm just... I, I mean, I can't tell you all of our secrets. <laughs> that would be terrible, wouldn't it? But I don't give a dabble no more. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the police never pulled out a gun on you. No. no, I know that. Yeah, I know. And um, 
So there's no reason. So I'm trying to trying to find out. And you saying my dad's gun was there? That's a hundred percent. Okay. That's a ten thousand. And here's you mean tell you why? I'll, 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 I'll help you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Really. Here's the deal on that. So the gun was um, uh, analyzed mm -hmm. from the other night because that's part of our process. Yeah. Everything comes in, we analyze it just in case it was used in any other commission, and then we give everybody's guns back to them. That gun killed this dude. Well, it's one of the bullets that killed this dude. One. How many bullets were there? Well, I can't tell you that. You didn't have anything to do with it, right? Oh, well, you, we're talking, you're trying to say that I did so. Well, yeah, just but I, I'm just asking you why. Why what? When you shot and killed him, just why? Right. Man, come on now. Don't. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I guess, then, uh, so this is it. That's uh last time we, we had a chance to talk. Okay. I yeah. didn't do that. Yeah, no, I... Uh, I hear you. I hear you. All right, let me get the rest of the paperwork together and uh, um, and see if uh, Levitt w w what he wants. Now the stuff that that's not yours. Yeah, and you you willing to talk to me afterwards and keep me updated because you put me in this. Yeah. And I want to know now. Well, I can't. One of the ways. I'm not saying like like I can't I'm tell you about who would do some slimy shit like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you'll know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. But I just can't talk to you about an open investigation. You understand that? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Goodness. All right. So the stuff, the guns that aren't yours, I can't release those to you. Oh, no. Obviously. Nobody, well, you got to call my stepdad because he's worried about his shop. <laughs> is he? Okay. And your, your stepdad is Milton? Yes, sir. But your dad, uh, Jerry Sr., is the, you said, is the 357. Yes, sir. I'll run out there. Is he at home now? Yeah. Okay. Were you at home? No, uh, I was headed to work. Oh, okay. Okay, but is he? He's at home, and he can't. What? I'm not going home. What's that? What? I'm not going home. You're not going home. Is that where? You're no, going? I'm saying you're. Are you going back to the house? Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna go. go I'm gonna go. You. I'm gonna go talk to him. You're going to work. You were. Oh, yeah, I'd like to go. Yeah, to work. yeah. I got gotcha, you. Gotcha. You think they'll give me a ride to work? Yeah. I tell they you this. me up in the middle of going to work. Why not take me to work afterwards? Man, right, I got, right. I got shit to support. Bills. My okay. dad. Support your dad. Okay. Um, I will check yeah, with them. Elder, and yeah. I know these guys are going to give you a ride. That's a promise. I'm promising you these guys will, um, will take care of you. For a while, Jerry has been under the impression that the detectives might just be bluffing about having evidence against him. However, it's at this point that the detective hints at the existence of an audio recording, a significant piece of evidence linking Jerry to the murder of Marquise. Jerry maintains a calm demeanor and attempts to intimidate the detective by challenging their claims. He tries to provoke the detective, hoping to extract more details about the evidence they possess. Such behavior is unusual among individuals facing such scrutiny. Jerry has proven to be a tough nut to crack so far. So let me see what else Detective Levitt needs to do, okay? What's Milton's number when you get hold of it? 334. Oh, yeah, good call. And that says 12 gauge, I think, or 16, no, I'm not sure. And his 357. No, that's not I dad. mean, your dad. Does sorry. your dad have a phone number? Yeah, is, but is your dad sitting there? Number. Yeah, he's at the house. Your What's dad's his phone house? number? Yeah. Uh, 904. I just got one of them damn this fine. Okay. Yeah, okay, sure. Um Obama phone or not Obama Trump. Obama's not around. You have to ask him when you get there. Okay. Hey, for y'all. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Give me just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Ask about work for me, please. Work. Right. Work. I'm not sure if you're really reading it here with, with Ray right now and stuff, with Detective Reeves, but he's, I don't know a lot about the case and all that stuff. I'm just kind of helping him out and all that stuff because if guys are out on another case right now and stuff, uh, he's trying to help you out here, man. Yeah. You're, you're drowning. You're like in this, you're out here in the middle ocean right now drowning. And he's throwing you all the life preservers he can. He, he just can't. I can't, he can't say who took the gun. It's not about the gun. We already know about the gun. All right. Don't worry about the gun right now. Okay. 
It's not the gun. It's about what happened out there. What happened? I don't That's know. Why. I wasn't there. Well, there's a lot of people right now that he's talked. Like I said, this happened back in February. Yeah. And he's talked to a lot of people. No he's good at what he does. That's why he's been here as yeah. long as he has. And I respect y'all. Exactly. And every question he's asked you, he's already known the answer to. Okay. And there's a lot he hasn't asked you. There's a lot he hasn't told you. are calling me a liar. So uh, we're not calling answer? you a liar. I'm not saying you're a liar. I'm just saying you're not telling us everything. That's what he's trying to do is get well, your you side of the story. Go back to the day. Go back to that I day. I don't know. Because they got your gun there. It's, it's not my gun. Them. I understand it. It's your dad's gun. But it comes and from I'm, your house. And house I'm, with, Tuesday. I said, I'm not worried about the gun. Well, let's forget about I the gun right now. The gun. What we're worried about is what people are saying that happened out there. People can your say whatever. And stuff. Your involvement. And we're trying to get your side of the story. There's something that, like I said, did this guy rob you for you to do whatever happened and all that stuff? He's trying to, like I said, you're in this ocean. He's throwing you a life preserver, man. He's wanting you to grab over that life preserver, pull you up, keep yourself from drowning. He's not doing You're that. drowning. I'm telling you, just from what, I, from what little I've heard right here, the little bit I knew about the case, you were, you were sinking fast okay. compared to what other people are saying. Their stories make more sense. They can go when he say, she say. I mean, that, that don't, y'all gonna go off of that? We go off of everyone's story. And not only just stories, is is the evidence. Like he's saying, that, yeah. that stuff doesn't lie. That's actual yeah. stuff. That's exactly. scientific stuff. That doesn't go away. And I'm not denying not about touching away. the gun the other night once hey, my house that's, got, or the girls got shot that's, up that's, and my dad had the gun. Yeah. Exactly. So, like I said, he's just trying to help you out. I want your side bro, of the story. I, I but if, if that's a, if that. that's a, what you're going to stay with, that you had nothing to do with it, but you got all these people are coming and saying these other things, it's going to be their word against yours. So why is he acting like I'm like I'm about to go to work? What, what, what are y'all trying to say? I didn't. I did it. I'm not saying that. I Maybe know. other people are. Well, you all got to bring them people in and talk to them. He has already. Brother Eo has already. And they can say he says she's added, bro. I, he's just, like I said, he's, he's just, just trying whole, to And I guarantee it's a whole bunch of kids, if I ain't mistaken. Because mm -hmm. look at the group he hangs around with. Mm -hmm. Why would they have some reason to throw you under the bus in? No idea. I mean, he asked him, you're saying, no, there's no reason for anyone to be. Throw me in, no wheel wheels, no nothing. The only thing I can see is you said you've never been robbed Creek. before or, or jacked or anything like that. So from being out in Cross Creek and all them kids be around watching you sell drugs and want to be like you, and then when you don't be your friend, then so be it. Right. Like I said, yeah, I'm, he, he's just trying to help you out, man. He's not trying yeah. to hem you up or anything. He, he's he's throwing you that life. Yeah, that's trying and to I and I will help out of the mix. He's I want to be out of the mix. mix. Well, what you said isn't helpful. What do you mean? What you say? You're, you're saying you haven't been there. No reason. No one's. You're trying to say I did it. That's what you're getting at. And I didn't do it. Y'all yeah. are looking all in the wrong places. And I don't want to talk to you hostile. Like okay. that, oh, I got that. you. I respect that. Have we talked for hostile or anything? I just. I don't know, man. Now y'all got me worried about what's going on in my life. And I ain't even did nothing. All right. Okay. Just like I said, I just want to come and let you know he's trying to help you out. Yes, sir. And all that stuff, trying to get your side of the story, get through one. But obviously, there's not not your side of the story. I didn't do. I wouldn't do nothing like that. Okay. All right, man. Like I said, he and all them. He probably will get another opportunity to talk to you and all that stuff. That's why we want to get everything we can now. Why bro. wouldn't we if we if I'm going to leave in here? Well, he's he's got to go and do what he needs to do now. And also, all right. So what, what y'all doing with me? Huh? huh? Just same time. He's, he's checking with Levin right now, right? The second detective's role here becomes crucial. Here he attempts to build a more personal rapport with Jerry by ensuring him that the detectives are on his side. However, he also places a condition that without the complete truth from Jerry's side, they won't be able to help him. 
It is important to note here that the second detective references testimonies from various individuals that cast doubt on Jerry's credibility and integrity. Moreover, the repeated use of the phrase, you are drowning, is a way of inducing subliminal fear of the consequences of his silence and constant denial. However, despite this psychological pressure, Jerry remains committed to the character he's been portraying and continues to assert his innocence. Okay, so, based on the information I have, and the witnesses that uh, I've spoken with, you're being arrested tonight for tampering with evidence. That's what you're being arrested for tonight. So anything... How am I tampering with evidence? That's what... That's what I the, came straight forward. I appreciate it. I appreciate you telling me the information that you told me. Okay? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm just letting you know. Being man to man. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I came to tell you that. Yeah. So you're being arrested tonight for tampering with evidence, okay, Dang. in connection with this. All right. Okay. Um, what, why would All right. I have anything? I haven't even did I, I, I haven't I, hit anything. I came How can y'all charge me with tampering when I haven't even That was the first thing I said. Is, that, that's the first thing I came and told you was, based on the evidence that I have, and the witnesses that I've talked to, all that will be disclosed to you. Yeah. Um, you're being arrested tonight for tampering with evidence. Just tampering with evidence. That's what you're being charged with tonight. Yes, sir. Okay. That's where you're being charged so far with tonight. Okay. These guys are going to take you next door. Can I get a cigarette? Yeah, yeah. I'll, Please. Yeah, That's I can do that. I yep, do. I can do that. Yep. Appreciate you. All right. All right. Stand up. Damn, man. What? I don't know. Huh? I don't know the details of any of this stuff, man. Too little on the totem pole for all this nonsense. I guess turn the rest this way so it doesn't Damn, that's crazy. He's going straight forward and still get In this phase of the interrogation, the detective's demeanor shifts and becomes more rigid and strict. Jerry is denied the assurance of what consequences he might face. The interrogator mirrors Jerry's behavior of withholding information throughout the interrogation. The only information Jerry gets is about the charges of arrest. This change in the detective's approach signals a heightened seriousness and the potential for more severe consequences. With consistent pressure put on him, Jerry eventually accepted that one of the individuals present with him during the shooting sustained a gunshot wound to the leg. They refrained from seeking medical attention, fearing it would connect them to the murder. The bullet remained lodged in the leg for nearly five months until it eventually came out. Jerry confessed that they killed Marquis Smith because he had previously stolen drugs from him. Jerry was scheduled to appear in court on October 16, 2019 for the first time. After a two-year-long trial, Jerry Lane Hinshaw Jr. pleaded guilty to manslaughter with a firearm and received a 30-year prison sentence on December 20th, 2022. He is currently incarcerated at the RMC West Unit in Lake Butler, Florida. In the gripping narrative of this interrogation, we witnessed a high-stakes psychological battle between a seasoned detective and a suspect determined to protect his secrets. The detective's strategic use of psychological tactics to peel away the layers of deceit demonstrated the art of law enforcement at its finest. Jerry's unwavering resistance forces us to contemplate the power of the human will and the lengths to which individuals will go to maintain their innocence, even in the face of overwhelming evidence. It raises questions about the boundary between truth and deception and the intricate battle that takes place in the interrogation room. What do you think about Jerry Lane Hinshaw Jr.? Add your thoughts and more case suggestions in the comments section below. If you want us to cover more such cases, like, share, and subscribe to our channel.